things are going to happen in the business and we've got to be able to have a good way to address issues as they come up and not the these kind of stereotypical way of we're going to discuss the heck out of all these symptoms around it never get to the root cause never solve anything hey guys welcome back to the leadership stack podcast the podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to increase your leadership teamwork and profits this is your host, Sean C, a.k.a. Mr. CEO at 22. Hey, guys, welcome back to the show. We are here again on Leadership Stack. And today we have a special guest for you all the way from around the world. It is morning here. It's around 8.30 a.m., and Jeff is all the way on the other side of the world. It's nighttime where he is. We have Jeff Chastain, founder and business coach and EOS implementer. And we're going to be talking about what EOS is because that's the first time I've ever encountered that term. He is the EOS implementer at Admentus Inc., which is his own company. And he is doing a fantastic job. This guy cares about his clients like you and I all should. And he also came from an employee jumping point, which a lot of us also came from. We were employed for X number of months, for X number of years, and suddenly we found problems, we found an itch we should scratch, or we just kind of realized that we're not growing and finally jumped ship. Without further ado, Jeff, thank you so much for being here in the show today. No problem. Thank you for having me out. All right, Jeff, we are, we are so excited to learn from you. We know we are going to gain so much wisdom from you. And maybe the first thing that we would all like to know is what is your startup journey? Every entrepreneur has a really interesting startup journey. You were employed before all the way to becoming an entrepreneur. What did that look like? Why did you make the change? This episode is partnered up with Armory.ph. That is A-R-M-O-U-R-Y dot P-H. Armory is an online watch store and is the exclusive distributor of the brands TW Steel, Dion Milano, Fonderia, Luminox, and Mondain in the Philippines. Yes, folks, those are Italian watch brands. If you are looking to buy your next go-to luxurious everyday watch, Go to armory.ph and enter the coupon code LS30. That's all caps LS30, no space. Armory.ph delivers straight to your doorstep with a security tape to make sure that your package is safe from theft, arrives on time, and is guaranteed working 100%. Go to armory.ph and buy your first luxury watch today. Well, in a lot of ways, mine kind of went through lots of fits and starts and restarts and things like that. But I think that's probably typical of, of many entrepreneurs as well. But no, I I grew up in technology. I was programming as a kid kind of a thing, tearing apart computers in, in, in such as the state as they were at that point. We were we were still flipping floppy disks and stuff like that. But went through and my my family kind of environment was always go get the big corporate job stay there for your career is nice and safe everything go go retire at that point so that was really the the path i took straight out of college was to go join with hp actually at that point working their their supercomputing division here and spent like i said i think it was probably five six years something there out of college and while it was a nice solid stable job kind of a thing it just it never really i i never felt much that i was i was contributing anything or i was i was a part of anything it was just this big corporate machine kind of a thing and you're just another another cog another wheel there which if that's the mentality that that's fine i just it never really felt satisfying to me kind of a thing that I, I felt like i was spending too many days there of waiting for the my office mate or whatever to leave so i can leave right after and <laughs> keep the image up kind of a thing just okay how quick can i get out of here almost on some days and just it, it really got to the point where after a couple different reworks of the division i was in it was actually the when the, the compact merger hit, it was like, okay, they're turning everything over again. I'm going to go find a new cube, a new manager, whatever. It's time to get out of here and just go go do something different. At that time, obviously a, a major jump because that's all I had known. And I was fairly new married at that point. We had one kid that was one year old and another one on the way. And it's like, okay, let's bail out of the corporate job and the, the corporate medical plan and everything with a, a brand new family here. But looking back at it, everything went well and it was a good decision at that point it was just obviously a little risky at that point looking at it but yeah it just was one of those that i just 
didn't feel like I was contributing. There wasn't really any vision or anything to the organization. It's like, okay, I want to, I want to go somewhere where I can actually contribute, where I can actually go make a difference. Like I said, immediately went into my own company at that point. Technically, it's the the exact same company I have it today. The the corporation from a an entity standpoint, it's changed changed directions a few times over the time, but really went into basically continuing my technology journey or technology training to be more of what today is known as a, a fractional CTO. So working with more of the, actually take that back, it was with all different kinds of companies. I, I spent time with Hasbro Toys and with Lord & Taylor, which was fun, kind of a thing, doing e-commerce work with them, but I also did plenty of small startups and small companies. So it was really getting a flavor of all different sides but just doing it more from that consulting kind of standpoint of what kind of tools, what kind of software, what kind of custom software, what, what can we bring to the table from a technology standpoint to really address in those days still emerging technologies to a large degree for a lot of those companies. It was custom development, custom software it was not something they did a lot of at that point. Really kind of jumping off into that and then swimming at that point from an entrepreneurial standpoint from, from there on out. One thing we have in common is the first company we, we ever entered is HP and also the last company that we uh, <laughs> ever entered is HP. Although yours is five years. My, I stayed there for five short months and then I had to focus on SEO Hacker. Just it, it was growing. It was making money. And if I didn't give it my full time attention, it's going to it's just going to either stay there or shrink. That's it. It's yeah. not going to grow. So I had to make also that risky decision as well as you did to jump ship. But during that time, I didn't have a family yet, no, no wife yet. So it was a lot less riskier for me. Some entrepreneurs, that's what they're thinking. Sean, I have a wife and kids. Should I do this? Should I jump ship? Guys, look at Jeff and he has made, I think, I do believe his best decision during that time. It was risky, but you know, there's also that risk. Even if you stay there, you are risking your future. You are risking the rest of your life. You are also yeah. risking this, the, the stability and security of your future family. Yeah, it's it's not a guarantee for sure. Many of us have figured that out, but yeah, it's it's it, it's if nothing else, you're always going to sit there and kind of wonder what if, if nothing else. So yeah, Jeff, I want to know about EOS, and I read on your website that it's the Entrepreneur Operating System. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, let me actually fill in a little bit more of my story, and that'll actually lead right into that because obviously during this time that I was doing all the fractional CTO work, I actually got with my brother-in-law at one point, started up a, a managed services provider. So we were heavy on on technology. We we knew anything about knew everything about networks, cloud services, all that kind of stuff that we could bring to a client base. But from a, a business startup standpoint, and this is like I said, where where we'll get to with EOS and what I see with working with a lot of entrepreneurs now is we had our very singular focus. We we knew technology. We didn't necessarily know sales, marketing, finance, et cetera, all the other pieces. So that while we were able to get the business off the ground initially, once we tried growing it out and scaling it, there was no foundation on the business and basically everything very shortly a couple of years fell apart at that point that we just didn't know how to go run a business at that point more than just the two of us and apparently i'm a slow learner because i actually went and tried the same thing a few years later as a, a software as a service startup with a couple other friends but basically still pulled the same thing it's like okay we knew how to go build software we knew how to go do everything from a tech standpoint didn't really have much clue about, okay, what's a target market? How are we going to go market to them, sell to them, all that kind of stuff. So all that said, to answer your question, what EOS is and really kind of what I set out as a journey is like, okay, already had two failed companies here. Why are these failing? What, what's going on? What do I need to learn? Because I don't have an MBA background. My background's technology. I've got a comp sci major, things like that. I don't know business. What, what do we need to do here from an entrepreneurial standpoint? to build out and scale a solid business here. So I was going out, talking with different people I knew, trying to go effectively cobble together my own system, my own practices, because I'm a big process person. And honestly, through a, an Amazon book suggestion of all things, got the, the book Traction from, from Gino Wickman. And I've been reading all kinds of business books, again, trying to figure out what to do here. And this book just was completely different to me. That It, it was really written from that entrepreneurial kind of standpoint, it wasn't academic. It, it was really just basic tools, basic business processes put together in a, a structure and a system that I, as an entrepreneur that didn't have that business background, could sit here and identify with. Like I said, it's, it's basic business practices. There's no rocket science. There's no, no silver bullets, anything fancy in it. It's just, okay, how do you go about building out what we look at is, is really six different key areas of the business? How do we go looking at 
your vision as a company? How do we structure that vision, get it out of the entrepreneur's head, make sure everybody's actually moving towards that same vision? How do we deal with people? How do we structure an organization so we can hire on and scale? How do we actually, and this, this goes back to one of your previous episodes I was listening to it with the, the accounting and the, the finance side. How do we actually run the business on numbers rather than just a gut feel or a feeling of, hey, yeah, I like this, this product idea or this market sounds like a good idea. It's like, is it really? Do we have the numbers to back it up and actually running the business on those numbers? And then once you kind of get those three looking together, then it's things like, okay, how do we handle issues? Because business, we're going to have issues, whether it's a, a global pandemic right now or just a key employee leaving or whatever the case may be, things are going to happen in the business. And we've got to be able to have a good way to address issues as they come up and not the these kind of stereotypical way of we're going to discuss the heck out of all these symptoms around it, never get to the root cause, never solve anything. The, the fifth side is actually looking at processes so that we've got a documented way we do business so that that way, when you do bring on that new employee, it's already baked right here. You can say, OK, this is how we're going to handle sales. So you come on board from a sales perspective, you know, right hitting the ground. This is how I know to go do things without having to learn in an event kind of a thing there, a waste of resources. And then really the last component of it is what we refer to as traction. So basically, the way I look at that is the, the entrepreneurial's vision is the big elephant in the room. That it's like, okay, how are we going to tackle this elephant? And most people almost freeze up at that point saying, okay, I don't know how to attack this big picture, this big vision here. Traction is bringing that down to the, the bite-sized chunks to say, okay, what are we doing here for this quarter, for this next 90 days? so that we're all going making steps towards that big vision, but we're only looking at these small pieces and making sure everybody's focused, accountability, discipline, et cetera, on the specific pieces that we're supposed to be working on this quarter, not anything and everything else they dream of or get off track. So it's, it's just really tying those six kind of concepts together from a business standpoint, just to give you and your leadership team from an entrepreneurial standpoint, the tools to where you can go build that Really, it's building the foundation under the business that you've already got at that point. A lot of companies do struggle with that. I mean, just from the first thing that you mentioned, vision. There are so many companies that either get the vision wrong or have a vision statement on the wall. And that's all it is. It's a, it's a statement on the wall. They don't discuss it. It is not even an elephant in the room. It is non-existent. I'm sure that you're going to enlighten us about all of these things and how you help companies craft their vision statement, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Those are questions that I'm going to be asking later. What I do want to know, though, is what are some of the biggest problems that entrepreneurs face after the startup stage? And I know that you've helped a lot of companies that already have a solution in mind. Like I mentioned earlier for me in the pre-show before we started recording, some companies ask you for a CRM, a sales CRM, but you go ahead and tell them that you don't even have a good sales process. These companies, I assume, are on the scale-up stage because they're already asking for a CRM and it's a, it's a sizable investment. What are some of the biggest problems that they face during that stage? Well, a lot of what they're dealing with is, because yes, it answered your question first, that yeah, they are typically looking at the growth stage of a company. Though, that we're, Even from a personal standpoint, I don't see... If, if you've got an early stage startup at that point, your focus needs to be on proving your product, proving your market, making sure that you actually have a viable product out there. You don't need to be spending a whole bunch of money on invest money on foundation, on systems, on tools, things like that. I'm again, I'm a big process person. So that was always one of the things that kind of bit me is that I wanted all of the, I wanted the huge machine built out that's going to handle a hundred customers when we haven't even gotten customer one in the door yet, kind of a thing. So you've got, you've really got to focus on getting that customer one in door, in the door. But once you start hitting that growth phase and saying, hey, OK, this is simply more than I can handle with my two or three people around me. We've got to go grow this and scale this. That's that's where and, and really on up as long as you've got, still got that entrepreneurial kind of mindset of saying, hey, I want more. I want to grow this company. I, there's more possibilities here than what we're currently capable of. That's where EOS really sits is its sweet spot. So from a, a struggle standpoint, a lot of times it, it really kind of varies based upon what that entrepreneur wants out of business. So I've, I'll have people ask me all the time, it's like, well, what, what's your, your profitability measurements that you get out of EOS? And it, it really doesn't necessarily go that way because one entrepreneur may want more profitability. And they may say, hey, we used to be at 30, 40% margins. We've added on new staff. 
we should have scaled up and now we're only a 10% margin. What happened kind of a thing there. And that's, that's a lot of times that, okay, we don't have the system. We don't have the training, et cetera. We're just, we don't have the efficiencies anymore that we used to have. At the same time, they may be looking at, it may simply be that, hey, I want to, I'm the visionary type entrepreneur. I'm, I'm tired of fighting fires. I'm tired of dealing with issues in the business. I want to go play golf on Fridays and, and go back and have those conversations, those big conversations with my, my friends or the people out on the golf course. I just want that time back, that enjoyment back because I'm spending too much time right now doing stuff I don't like, basically. And it's, it's, it kind of takes the fun of what out of the, the business. And that's really what I've seen a lot of times because you have the, the early stage kind of failures where obviously the product didn't launch. But then you've also got a whole nother stage, usually about five to seven years where you start seeing those businesses fall out as well. And a lot of times that's really the, the entrepreneur, the, the visionary type says, okay, I, I was having fun down here when we were at four, five, 10, whatever people, early stage kind of a thing. Now that this has turned into a 20, 30 person company, this is business. This is work. I, I want to go back to playing in my, my area here, whether it's technology or medical or take your pick, whatever your little focus is, that this is your enjoyment play, play area. And now you're having to handle staffing, you're having to handle finances, you're having to handle marketing and sales. And you don't know necessarily, how do I, how do I get back to having fun? How do I structure this business? So it's, it's just really a sense of frustration almost more than anything is, okay, I don't, I don't know what to do. It's, it's, it's stuck here on the business that in many ways, like I said, it used to be fun. We used to be lightweight. We used to be agile. We could adjust real quick. Now it takes six months for anything reasonable to happen. And even then it, it's, it's questionable kind of a thing there. It's just everything's stuck in the mud. Nothing's moving forward anyway. So it's, it's a lot of times it's just pure frustration with the business is where they are. In terms of making money, generating revenue, I'm a businessman. I'm not an investor like Marvin Germo. But I do have investments, financial investments, because it is tough to just put your money in the bank and watch inflation eat it up. So I do have financial investments. It's just that I invest in my network more.